Hi everyone, uh, today I'm in Fort Lauderdale joined by uh, a Little Mo superstar, uh, Akasha Urobo. Uh, she has won the Little Mo Grand Slam twice, meaning she got to take two of the six foot trophies home. Uh, lately she's been working really hard, uh, currently she is the, uh, she's number one in, in Florida. So today I came here to interview her and her dad to see uh, how their journey was. So without further ado, Akasha, um, I would like to start off by asking you, what was it like when you won your first Little Mo? How, how did you feel? I couldn't really explain how it felt because I worked really hard for two years and winning the first one was already an emotional roller coaster. And then being able to come back and win a second one, it was just, I was speechless when it happened. Uh, and what did you do for the second one to try to make it happen again? Did you do um, anything different? Not necessarily. I just made sure that I kept my head in the game because I knew that I'm really trying to make a record here and slipping up was probably not the best choice yeah. in the process. And what was your favorite part of the Little Mo's? Definitely all the friends I made because yeah. in the process of the tournament, I made a lot of friends and some of them I still talk to and yeah. I see them at tournaments and we talk over social media and it's great to still have friends that I made at such a young age. Right. Mm -hmm. So after winning the Little Mo, how did like what were your next goals tennis wise? After Little Mo, I wanted to move on and try to win other tournaments that I can manage to grasp onto. I wanted to try to win higher level tournaments like level ones, threes, fours. And since last year when I turned 13, ITFs. Right. Mm -hmm. So do you, when you focus on your goal planning, do you focus more on your short-term goals, on your long-term goals? How do you try to plan uh, for the future? To be honest, I focus on all of them because in the process, you really have to because if I focus on the short term, I have to make sure that my long term is in check. And in order to do that, I have to make sure that I know what I'm doing, how I'm going to do it, and the goals that I'm setting to complete in the future. Gotcha, gotcha. So uh, what, what would a regular day be like in your life? Like, how do you balance your school, your tennis, your friends? How would you balance everything in a normal day? Well, in, in school, I used to take elective classes, but now I took a break from that so I could get my schoolwork done in school so that as soon as I'm out of tennis, I can, I'm out of school, I can just go straight to tennis. And my dad helps me balance a lot between regular life and tennis. And I have my good balance of hanging out with friends and doing tennis and being able to relax at home with my dogs. But yeah. So out of the four main uh, groups, like, um parts of tennis, meaning uh, fitness, tactics, technique, and mental strength or toughness, mm -hmm. what would you say is the most uh, important and which one would you recommend younger kids to work on or should they work on, try to work on all of them? Which one would you give the most importance to? If I had to rank it, I'd say the most important one is your mental health. I'm still working on it now. And um, in order to really go far, you have to have a strong mental game because without that, you could just crumble at any second, especially in the most important matches. Okay. Mm -hmm. And when um, moving on to, so when you play uh, tournaments, what, what are your thoughts on playing up against older kids? Um, I don't have that many thoughts towards it because growing up, my dad always placed me around older people. So when I'm a little, I'm a little intimidated when I go into it, but at the end of the day, age never has anything to do with it. And skill is skill and practice is practice. So as long as you put as much as you can into practice and you build your skills, you'll be fine. And how is your experience playing your first ITF? You said when you turned 13, you started playing them. So how was your first experience? Um, the first one, it was, it was pretty good because it was pretty organized. I played my first one in December. It was Orange Bowl. It was technically an ITF kind of, but I played a lot of hard matches. I got through some and obviously some I didn't get through. But in the process, I really learned that th if this is the next step in my career, I have to really take it seriously because it's really it really goes hand in hand because ITFs is like really next level and right below playing junior um, opens and grand slams in itself. Right. Mm -hmm. We saw on your Instagram that you got uh, your own bag with Babolat and you've partnered with Babolat. How did that make you feel? 
Uh, we don't know if it was your first sponsorship, but mm -hmm. when you get sponsored, how does that make you feel? It's really cool. I've been with Babolat for a while now, and they're really cool about a lot of things, and um, they send strings a lot because I break a lot, and um, it's really great that I can have a whole team behind my back and that I have someone that I can rely on when it comes to my tennis supplies, and yeah. So we recently heard that the city of Fort Lauderdale granted you a recognition. Can you tell us a little more about that? Um, well, I didn't expect anything out of it. I just got out of school and my dad told me to change and we went to, I don't know what the place is called, like a courthouse or something like that. And he told me to read the program and I see my name on there. I'm like, why is my name there? And then it finally comes up and then I have to walk in front of all these people and it's also being televised. And I was just super nervous because public speaking is not my strong suit. I'm still trying to get better at it. Right. But yeah, it was pretty cool. And the fact that I can still find it online and the fact that I have something that can actually be online, it's really amazing in itself because sometimes you don't feel that you're that special, but there's always reminders that you can find to really help your self-esteem. So what's your next big goal? Like right now, what are you trying to work towards? I'm trying to work towards building a lot of points from ITF so that I can have my first try at a, maybe even a qualifier in a Grand Slam. I really want to try to do that next year and um, I'm still working on it and it would just be really cool if I can really get there because I know I'm close but just putting in the extra work is what I need right now. Well thank you very much. You no problem. A great interview. Guys make sure to follow uh, Akasha on Instagram. It's uh, Akasha underscore Urobo. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, right now I'm about to talk with her dad, so stay tuned for that. See you. Thanks for joining us, TJ. Uh, I just wanted to uh, start off by asking you, what was your journey like? How did you become a coach? Uh, I became a coach after playing for so many years and uh, traveling was getting to the point where it was getting a little difficult. Right. And so I wanted to stay in the sport. So I figured the next best thing was to coach and I've loved it ever since. Got it. And so how is your uh, on-court uh, relationship with Akasha compared to your off-court? Like do you like as a coach and then as a parent how does it uh, does it make it a little harder like challenging to make it uh, you know to be a coach and a parent? Do you think it's the same? What do, what do you think? Well for me and Akasha um, I learned by watching a lot of people even before Akasha was born. I always told myself when I have a kid if they do decide to stay in tennis. I'm going to keep it fun, at least keep it more, um, just pretty much keep it more fun. Right. And so when I'm on the court with Akasha, I know how to switch back and forth. That's good. And sometimes I, I'll confuse her a little bit, like mm -hmm. instead of taking it really seriously, I switch to dad mode and we're just having fun. And But I, she tends to have more fun when I'm doing that with her. So I'm going to ask you the same question I asked Akasha. What would you say is the most important aspect uh, between mental, uh, technical, tactics, and fitness? Uh, for me, I mean, it's changed over the years. But seeing how fast she's developed, her, her, um, the mental part is more important for her right now. Got it. Yeah, more important, followed by the physical, you know, training off, on court and off court. But mental is definitely top of our list. And uh, as a coach, how do you like? What do you um, look forward to the most in terms of like? Do you focus more on the UTR, on ITF points, USTA? What do you try to focus to get them um, like better in like ranking wise? Hmm. That can be a little tricky. Um, for her, for Akasha, um, just mainly development. Development. You know, um, sometimes I'll throw her in any. It could be a UTR tournament, USTA but a high level tournament that's going to push her to really get her full potential. But as far as moving forward, um, as far as turning pro, we're really focusing a lot on the ITF events okay. right now. So after we finished this cool interview with Akasha and TJ, we were able to jump into the court to hit some tennis balls. Thank you very much, Akasha and TJ, for your guys' time. Good luck in this exciting journey.